Live from the UATV studio, I'm your host, Mike Raven. From WildcatAuthority.com, Derek Basingdon. From the Daily Wildcat, Annie Marum. By a jumbo jet. It wasn't easy. And from Camp Radio Sports Director, Zach Clark. This is the Dorm Room Sports Chat. What's up, Wildcats? Welcome to this semester's final show of the Dorm Room Sports Chat. Tonight, find out how fan support helped Arizona escape past the number three Sun Devils and hear what one of the players has to say when I put him under the bear down spotlight. We have a lot going on tonight, including some games for the analysts and a final farewell to one of us at the end of the show. But first, the basketball team Gator hunting in Gainesville, looking to upset number 12 Florida on the road. Arizona coming out strong in their hardest contest of the season. Kyle Fogg's offensive performance helping the Cats to a one-point lead at the half. Cats up in the second, 57-50 with just seven minutes to play. Gators don't back down, though, coming right back to tie it up at 61. 14 seconds to go. Cats down one. Nick Johnson turns the ball over. Cats have no choice but to foul. Just a couple seconds left now. Cats down three. The inbound to Solomon Hill. He throws it up, but wait, fouled? Hill gets three shots to the game. He's as cool as the other side of the pillow. We're heading to overtime, but the Cats couldn't hang. Florida finishing Arizona off 78-72. Arizona coming back to Tucson on beautiful Saturday afternoon, taking on the Clemson Tigers, though. This game never really close. Right out the gate, the Cats dominating, giving themselves a 13-point cushion at halftime. Nick Johnson with a monster 14-point night and some dunks to, on top of that. Cats going on to win 63-47. Derek, we talked about the basketball team being humbled by Florida on last week's show. It turned out to be a game that the Cats really should have won. How impressed are you with their performance? I'm quite honestly pretty impressed. Uh, I'll fully admit I didn't think they'd come close in this game. I thought it'd be a 20... 15 point ball game, but they hung through. Uh, just just imagine what this team could have done if Nick Johnson wasn't the point guard. He was playing his natural two position. But uh, I compare this game kind of to the Kansas game last year. It's kind of a benchmark game. Saw where this team was. And like we talked about last show, I think this team is going to continue to improve as the season goes along. And I, they took a big step this weekend. Well, I think we can all agree that the, the Cats were, while they did play a, a, a good game, were, were bailed out by poor shooting on Florida's part. I mean, they were uh, miserable. Miserable from the foul shooting line, or from the foul line, excuse me. And, and then, of course, from three-point line, too, they were almost equally as cold. So the Wildcats played well, but they had a little help. Yeah, I think you have to keep in mind, though, at the, at the same time, their perimeter defense was fantastic. I believe they're ranked number one in the Pac-12 in perimeter defense with Kyle Fogg not locking down one of uh, Florida's best shooters. So I think individual, while, while Arizona kind of lacks in size, they make up for it on the perimeter, limiting those outside shots. And... That's why you saw them really bury Clemson. Uh, Clemson, they're a three-point shooting team as well, and they can never get it going. Well, Annie, I want to go back to the Florida game right now. Solomon Hill had five points in the game, three of which coming in the final seconds at the free throw line to send the game into <coughs> overtime. What did you think about the foul, and what did we learn about Hill handling some pressure? Well, although he only had five points compared to his average of 14, it was when those three points came into fact that played like that stood out to me. He made all three to tie the game and to send it into overtime. And for me, we've been looking for the leader of the team. We've been looking for someone who can handle that pressure. And I think we saw against Florida that Solomon's the guy who can handle that pressure. And although Nick might have been the guy stats-wise to hand it to, I think immaturity showed there, and Solo stepped up as the leader for me. Yeah, and he had a great game on Saturday as well against Clemson. He's been dominant on the boards lately, and that's something that he's going to have to do for the Wildcats to be successful. So I think he's done a pretty good job. Again, didn't have his best game against Florida, but he came up when he needed it, and that's what the Wildcats need. Yeah, I think no question. You go back to the actual call. I, I think there's no question that was that was a correct call, and I think it looked like he was going up. And really, if Solomon Hill might not have been going up to shoot the ball, but once he saw that the defender's arm was locked around him, he's like, "Look, I'm going to get three shots here. Might as well go up." And I think that's just a smart basketball play by him as well. And that's just. Another example of this team growing and getting better day by day, game yeah, by game. Exactly. It shows his game awareness, and that shows his maturity as well. He knew that he might not have actually been going up to shoot that free throw or the three-pointer, but he knew as soon as he saw, like you said, that guy's arm locked, that he was going to sell it, and he did, and it worked. All right, and I'm going back to you right now, Zach. The Gator shot 26% from three-point range and 46% from the free throw line. Arizona shot fairly well, but turnovers, again, a key in this loss. They had 17. Talk about why this has been such a problem. 
Yeah, you look at it. When the Wildcats win, turnovers are on the 10 mark. When they lose, much closer to 20. The problem here, no true point guard really in this game. They started Nick Johnson, a place he'd only been twice or once before, twice after that. He started against the Ball State at the point as well. The lack of Josiah Turner in that game really hampered the Wildcats' ability to move the ball around without a pure passer out there around the point. Yeah, I think that's why Josiah was brought to this team. He was, he's not brought to score the ball. Nick Johnson, that's his deal. That's where he comes to, and he needs to carry the bulk of the points. And really, being a, I think we've talked about this before, and we all can agree, college basketball is such a guard-driven lead now, especially with the point guard making smart decisions, getting it inside, then getting it back out. And when you have a guy that's never played the position before, you can't really blame Nick. I think he did a fairly good job. But, you know, when you're playing a good team such as Florida, a top-ranked team like that, you're going to need all hands on deck, and they didn't have that. And I think that just goes back to Josiah needing to be a little more mature. Sean Miller said he, he this guy's a good kid, but he's just got to get – Got to get, get a little smarter. Got to get a better alarm system. And while, yeah. while we're on you, Derek, I want to go to the Clemson game now and talk about Nick Johnson a little more in a positive aspect. I mean, yesterday the Cats beat down Clemson. They looked really good. Nick had 14 points and some Showtime dunks. Did we know he could get up like that? <laughs> well, I, I've watched some of his highlights from high school at Finley Prep, and this guy, this guy can always get up. It's just kind of a matter of whether he's going to be able to translate that exciting play to the college game. I think. Uh, He's already answering those questions. He absolutely is. And I think um, overall, even more impressively, this guy is making clutch buckets. I believe the Arizona, while Clemson was making their mini run in the second half there, he had a clutch uh, mid-range shot to keep them in it, well, keep them up by nine, which and they eventually rolled on for the victory. But this guy is really maturing. I think you need to have a guard that can score the basketball if you're going to win in D1 college ball. And I think that's what Arizona has now. I'm not going to jump to any wild conclusions, but – you look for how can people fill in for what Derrick Williams was able to do last year. Nick Johnson is not the player that Derrick Williams was. But as far as explosivity to the basket is concerned, he is the one that has to step up and make those big plays. And so far, he's done a pretty good job of that, especially for a freshman. All right, Andy, I want to wrap this up with you. Arizona has yet to beat a ranked team this season and might not have a chance to do so when Pac-12 play rolls around. They play number, two tw or number 22 Gonzaga on Saturday. How important is it to get a win here? Well, after Gonzaga's loss to Michigan State, it's questionable of whether they'll be ranked at all coming out when the ranks come out on Monday. But either way, a win against Gonzaga is vital to this team if they want to have any chance of beating a ranked team. And, yeah, there's chances that Cal might be ranked, maybe Stanford. But right now, you know, Gonzaga is the first one that we need to focus on. Yeah, you're dead on, Annie. There is no quality win looking forward to the Pac-12. If you look at the schedule, especially with what UCLA has gone through, finally dismissing Reese Nelson, Jahi Carson is not going to play for Arizona State this season. That's a huge loss. This Pac-12 is a mess. Yeah, I think that's maybe an understatement. I think, but I think it's even simpler than that. You can't do anything about the schedule. You have to play the games you're dealt. And I think more importantly, it's just important for Arizona to keep building confidence and keep getting wins in general. It doesn't matter who it's against because well, let's be honest. They've struggled against teams like Seattle Pacific. There's no gimme. So as long as they can win games in front of them, this one I don't think is any bigger than any other yeah. game. You, Al Davis said it, right? Just, win, Just baby. win, baby. Hey, we have a shot. The basketball team 7-3 and three, and looking impressive in the last two games. When we come back, it's game time. Stay with us. I'm Derek Williams, your former U of A Wildcat. You're watching UA TV. Don't change the channel. the first game of the night over or under I'm gonna give a topic to each analyst with a number and they're gonna tell me if they think that number is high or low and why the first one's for you Zach the football team wins six games next season over or under so what you're asking me if they're gonna be are they gonna be boy eligible next season uh pretty oh much boy push I'm going push six wins I know everybody hates that but I don't care six wins I think at this point would be it's, it's an improvement don't you hear those sides over there I'm going push six wins. If you give if you gave me five and a half, I'd go over. Awesome. If you gave me six and a half, I'd go under. Well, I'm glad I didn't. I am too. <laughs> Great, dude. Great. Wow, way to just got on one there. Hey, it's okay. Number oh. two, Derek. Brady Lefford scores 28 and a half goals this season. He has 21 right now. Over or under? Oh heck, I'm actually. Push. 
I'm gonna make this easy on you guys. I'm gonna make a decision. Say over. Why not? This is this hockey team is continuing to improve. They're scoring goals. Obviously a tough weekend with ASU, but I think overall this team is getting better. He's already got 21 goals. He's still got some time to get going over. Simple as that. Boom. All right, next one, Annie. Softball pitcher Kenzie Fowler wins 26 games this season. She won 26 last year. Over or under? Don't want to hear push. <laughs> no push. push. I'm going. I'm going over. Considering last year's season and the sweep at the Arizona Fall Classic, where uh, Kenzie Fowler contributed to only giving up seven hits and 14 strikeouts, I think she can do it this season, and I'm going to go over. All right, Zach. The gymnastics team finishes fifth overall in the Pac-12 this season. Over or under? So if I said push, I'm sure I'd get in some trouble, right? Okay. We'll kick you off the show. It's a don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> the Pac-12 is a tough conference, but I think Arizona is on the rise. Uh, I'm gonna go over fifth, so four below, or higher, I guess, going that way. All right, the last one is for you, no, Derek. No. The basketball team wins 23 and a half games this season. Over or under? The uh, team's obviously improving, but I'm going to go under on this one. I think, uh, yeah, the Pac-12 is a weak conference, and yeah, Arizona, I think, definitely has a chance to finish in the top three or should finish in the top three. They still got it. I think there's teams like Stanford and Oregon State, though, and Washington that are going to give the Cats some hiccups uh, during the regular season. So this team is not a lock to win any game, and uh, I'm going to go under. Gonna say a tournament berth though. All right. Well, that's gonna do it for over or under. After the break, find out why the Sun Devils are turning into the hockey team's worst nightmare. UATV 3 UATV 3 when I turn on the TV, I turn it to channel three. Cause they got all the greatest shows that I've been waiting to see. It's entertaining to me, cause it's pertaining to me. And all the other wildcats in the student body were broadcast in. Lots of all the residence halls, so all y'all's in the halls. Turn your TVs on the channel three for she Z. So you can see me and all the other happy people down at UATV three. The number 20 Wildcats hosting number three ASU Friday night. David Herman between the pipes looking for another big win to add to his resume. Right off the bat, ASU's Colin Heckel putting the puck past Herman, taking an early 1-0 lead. Cats coming right back with two goals of their own, going up 2-1. Then a controversial goal coming from ASU, tying it up. Sun Devils scoring three more unanswered goals and leading 5-2 heading into the third. Here comes the freshman David Riss battling back for the Cats with two goals of his own bringing ASU's lead to one. About six minutes remaining, the Wildcats' hopes of completing their comeback are squashed by Dan Stierner. Coming, scoring off a faceoff, ASU wins six to four. Last night's Cats getting a shot at redemption early in the game. Andrew Murm scoring on a power play to give Arizona a one nothing lead, but that lead short-lived. Sun Devils going on a scoring spree, extending their unbeaten streak to 20 games over Arizona. The final in this one, seven two. Any two tough losses to rival ASU. Arizona really needing to win at least one of the games this weekend. How bad does this hurt Arizona? Well, I mean, any loss is going to hurt Arizona, especially when it's against your rival ASU. But I think, you know, what's done is done, and the only thing that the <coughs> hockey team can do now is make the changes that they need to make and focus on what they need to improve to win the next game. Yeah. Right. Anybody? Yeah, well, yeah, I think anybody. going off what you just Push. said. Push. <laughs> Push. <laughs> But I, th I think that a couple, a couple of tough breaks in the first game. Can't even talk today, with the with that arguable goal that shouldn't, that didn't count, that maybe should have counted, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, Zach, you were there. You called right. the games. You know that tough breaks happen, and I think all you can do is look on to the next one now. Well, yeah, and you can talk about the tough breaks all you want, but what it really comes down to here is we let's not forget Arizona State, number three in the country. This is a very very talented hockey team. And, you know, don't, uh, don't take too much credit away from what they're able to do uh, on their own end. All right, Zach, I'm staying with you. You were there last night calling the game the largest crowd so far this season at the Tucson Convention Center. Talk about what the atmosphere was like. The atmosphere is unbelievable. One of the reasons kids come and play hockey here at the University of Arizona is because they get to play in one of the largest venues in the country concerning college hockey. That's NCAA, ACHA, bar none. And you can go into a place and have 5,000 fans yelling and screaming. It was wonderful. But the problem was, especially last night, Arizona State scored very early in the second period and very early in the first period on Friday. It takes a wind right out of the sails. Early goals uh, mm -hmm. in, in certain situations hurt the Wildcats last night as, as far as the atmosphere is concerned. Yeah, actually, I made it out to the game last night too, so I, I was in the stands just having a good time as a spectator. And, 
Yeah, Arizona lost 7-2, and I think even late in that game, you didn't see a lot of go fans going toward the exit, though, and I think overall I was really impressed. I think the baseball team better hope they can get something but, going Well, like it's, that. it's a better crowd than there is at football. That's no, for darn sure. Yeah, that's that's sad part is that's absolutely true. Yes, it is. Yeah. You're talking better now, Derek. I'm going to give you a question right now. <laughs> see if I can answer it. <laughs> <laughs> no promises. David Herman has played well this season in goal, especially against top-ranked opponents. Why did he struggle against the Sun Devils? Oh, you mentioned it. I think... ASU is a very good team. It's pretty simple. Uh, they're number three or four in the nation, depending on what poll you look right. at. And, and really what it comes down to, goalie being a goalie is kind of like being a pitcher in baseball, where it's just such a mental game. You have a bad outing, and sometimes if you're not mentally strong enough, it can kind of snowball on you. So he's just got to get his head on straight, realize that this, he's a great goalie, and he's made these saves before. Uh, and his defense has got to give him help as well. Well, yeah, and that, that has to be said. You know, Let's not pile it all on David Herman. Uh, last night, uh, especially, Arizona didn't get a lot of help out front defensively, and a lot of pucks got to Herman that probably shouldn't have, and so I think that, that's one of the reasons you saw a higher total for Arizona uh -huh. State in the goal tally. And I think, Zach, even to what you were saying, even on the offensive end, when you know that you don't have a big margin for error right. because you're not scoring the puck, you, you're, you're just you're pressing more, and I think it's easy to see that he was pressing last night and he was pressing even Friday night. All right, Andy, it's your turn. I want you to talk about penalties and how they hurt the Cats this weekend. Well, penalties are always going to hurt, and especially in hockey, when you play down a man for two minutes, it can seem like an eternity. And what really hurt the Cats was when, after the controversial call of the goal that most thought, you know, shouldn't have been a goal, they got a penalty during that controversial call, which put another person in the box. ASU scores 40 seconds later. They're down 3-2. I mean, that's hard to come back from. Yeah. So penalties are going to hurt any kind of team, and especially in hockey, yeah, and we talked about how good Arizona State is. You can't afford to make mental mistakes against a team that's that talented because they're going to they're gonna make you pay for it, and that's exactly what happened last night mm -hmm. and on Friday as well. It's All amazing. Right. A 2-1 lead just like that turning into a 3-2 deficit. 40 seconds. Yeah, un unbelievable. Okay, Zach, Arizona is 0-4 against ASU this season. They play each other two more times at Oceanside Arena, two more back at home. Will the Cats beat them this season? You know, Arizona State, again, is, a, is a, a very, very good hockey team. But at the same time, Arizona, in their own right, is a very good hockey team. You know, Oceanside's a tough place to play. That's where they go next at the end of January, which is at Arizona State. They'll host two more in Tucson after that. And uh, I like for Arizona to get, uh, you know, at least one at home. Maybe they'll sneak one and get one on the road, too, and, and go uh, two and two the rest of the way. All right, well, the hockey team is on vacation until January 6th, where they will continue their homestand against San Diego State. Next up... Hear about the hockey team on a more personal level when a player sits down with me under the Bear Down Spotlight. And now it's time for the Bear Down Spotlight, brought to you by UATV. All right, we're back, and I'm here with junior captain Brian Slagaki from the hockey team. How you doing tonight? Doing well. How you doing? We're doing good right now. You guys are looking really good this season. You ready to answer some questions on the Bear Down Spotlight for Absolutely. me? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to start it off right now. Talk to me about the success this team has had so far this season. Um, we've beaten a lot of good teams. We've beaten three top ten teams, uh, Iowa State, Oklahoma, and then uh, Ohio. Uh, I think we're, we've definitely progressed a lot this season. We're finally, you know, believing in what Coach Hogan is, has been teaching us and coaching us for the last however many months, and it's finally starting to click, and I think we're understanding how to come together as a team. All right, you talked about beating three top-ranked teams already, which means you've had a really hard schedule so far this season. How big of a challenge has it been for you to take on these top-ranked teams? I mean, it's tough because in the last couple seasons we've been playing D2 teams and not these great, you know, top 10 teams. I mean, co our coach comes from a nationally ranked program. He has two national champions, championships himself, so he definitely knows what it takes to get the job done. And, I mean, with his systems and the way that we've been playing, I firmly believe that there's not a lot of teams that when we play our game can have a chance to beat us. And I think that's showed, again, you know, in our record so far. Now, you just mentioned Sean Hogan's had experience <coughs> at this level. I mean, how big has it been for your team for him coming in right now and uh, 
putting you guys where you are. I mean, it's huge. I mean, he's he's a, he's a great coach. I mean, we, we couldn't have a better coach in the country. I mean, he has great experience from the NCAA level all the way down to juniors. I mean, he's been there. He's won national championships. You know, he's he's exactly what we needed. We need somebody who's going to be strict on us, discipline, and teach us the way we need to play the game to get the victories that we've had this season. Now, that's his job as a coach. You're the captain. Talk to me about your leadership for this team and how you're really motivating all the players around you. Um, I think my leadership method is more of a, I like to lead by example. I'm not a very vocal player or whatever, but you know, I try to make a simple play, you know, score a goal just to get the guys, you know, to show, you know, this is the way that the game's supposed to be played. You know, if you follow what I do, if, you know, cause I'm listening right to coach. If you do what I do, we're going to be successful. And I mean, really just keeping the guys in line and making sure that they do what coach wants us to do is kind of what I, you know, I make sure I do. And you just talked about scoring goals. You had 23 last season. You're second on the team this year with, I believe, 10 goals. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're going to top that total from last year? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I mean, we're playing a lot tougher opponents this year, so it's, I mean, it's a little more difficult. But if we're winning, I'm not really upset. If we are losing, then it gets a little more frustrating in my head. However, I think, you know, next semester, I'm really going to pick it up with the goal scoring category. All right, and obviously ASU is a good team. They're number three for a reason. Yeah, you guys are 0 and 4 right now against them. Why do you feel you've struggled so far this season playing them? I mean, they're a very highly skilled team. They have a lot of players who have played in you know high places and who can score goals and you know in a second on you. I, I mean, I don't. It's tough. It's tough to say when those rival games. You know, I, it, they could be the number one team in the country, but it's always going to be a close game. Um, I think. I definitely don't think 7-2 to two is ever going to happen again. I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen again. But, I mean, we definitely we have the team to beat them, and I think it's, it's going to happen this year. All right. And now you guys don't play another game for, I believe, over three weeks. Now, is it hard to come back after that long of a break? Yeah. I mean, this kind of what we're used to, though. I mean, we have to be back January 3rd. Um, but over that time, you know, I'll probably take maybe a week to just relax and get the body rested. However, you know, I'm going to come back ready to play and I'm sure the team is as well and want to get, you know, make that national tournament that none of us have been to. All right, my last question for you. When you guys do come back, you play six games at home, then you go on the road and play seven straight, including two at ASU. How important is this last stretch of the season for you guys? I mean, it's, it's, it's probably the most important stretch of the season. We play the national champions from last year, which is, that's going to be a big game for us. And, you know, that'll show a lot of, a lot of fans or a lot of people around the country that were, you know, a legitimate threat for the, for nationals. I mean, when we go up to North Dakota, that's going to be very cold up there. However, I think we're very excited. We can beat uh, Minot State. And then obviously we got to steal something from ASU. I mean, I'm not, not losing 22, 21 straight from them. So this, this is where it's going to happen next semester. All right, well, you guys heard it here. Brian Slagaki, you are out of the Bear Down spotlight. <laughs> I want to thank you for coming on this show. Cats back January 6th, taking on San Diego State. Up next, these animals told me they want to play another game, so we're going to. Plus a special recap of this season and a farewell to one of us, all coming up after the break. Welcome back. We're going to play buy or sell. I'm going to throw different topics at each analyst, and they're going to buy or sell each one, meaning either being for it or against it. First one's for you, Derek. The baseball team moves to High Corbett Field this season. Buy or sell attendance going up? Nah, I think you got to buy this one. It's by default, really. It's not hard to get better than the attendance was last year. And uh, I think you, you mix in the beer, you mix in a good team. And wins, I think it's just going to be look at look what's happening with the hockey team right now. I think obviously, b baseball is is a pretty big sport here in the state of Arizona, and I think um, you're going to definitely see a pretty good turnout. I'm I'm excited to see it as everyone else should be. All right, Annie, the Pac-12 looking very mediocre in basketball this, this season. Buy or sell Arizona winning the Pac-12 championship? Well, considering there's no Pac-12 teams that are ranked at this time, and I think that the Wildcats can compete with Cal and Stanford. And Washington's young, just like the Wildcats. <coughs> so considering it's up for grabs, I'm going to go ahead and buy this one, take my Napoli money, and run with it. It's a, it's a buy for me. 
All right, Zach, the hockey team 0-4 this season against ASU. They play each other four more times. Buy a or sell Arizona beating ASU two games this season. Yeah, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. I, I said it earlier. I think that they will take one on home. I think they could steal one on the road. And you heard Brian Slogaki say it himself. They are sick and tired of losing to Arizona State. And I think at some point it's got to break. So I'm, I'm going to buy this. Right, Derek, the softball team has made the postseason 25 years in a row. Buy or sell the team making the postseason for the 26th year in a row. Well, I'm trying to break the trend here. I, I can't do <laughs> it, though. Happen. I'm, I'm going to buy this as well. Uh, it's really simple. They've made it 25 straight years. Why would I think that this year is going to be any different? This is, they've still got Kenzie Fowler. He's still got a lot of returners. And I coached my Mike Candrea. Why would I sell this? You guys buying a lot. Not going to have any money left for the holidays coming up. <laughs> Annie, last one's for you. Rich Rodriguez introduces the new Arizona football coach. Buy or sell Rich Rod surviving his five-year contract. I'm going to buy again, pass go, collect my $200. I think that Rich Rod, I'm buying what he's selling. His style of offense matches with the players we've got right now. So I'm going to buy that he can live out his five-year contract. Let's just rename this game Bye Bye Bye. Right? Yeah. Bye Bye Bye. No sell. That's it for it. Good job, guys. Now it's time to look at scores around the school. Like I said earlier, men's basketball losing in overtime to Florida, 78-72. Women's basketball team cruising along 66-42 over Long Beach State. Hockey team falling to ASU both times this weekend. And the swimming men's team ranked number one in the coaches poll. What to look forward to next week. Men's basketball taking on number 22 Gonzaga. Hopefully they're still ranked when we play them. Women's basketball traveling to Arkansas Pine Bluff. And the USA Diving Nationals in Austin, Texas on the 19th. All right. We've had a great season this semester, a lot of funny moments, and like any live show, we've had some technical difficulties. We're going to take a look back on this semester, show you a little something that I put together for you guys. Live from the UATV studio, this is the Dorm Room Sports Chat. That was the moment. And if that's not it, then it never will be. I never say never. I said it 100% chance. <laughs> hey, you got Justin Bieber over there. Yeah. And I, I just want to throw this out there right now. I understand you're 5'10". Yes. Good, I got two inches on this. <laughs> All right, Mike, we're going to have to talk about your Boston Red Sox, man. Uh, Ryan, All right, Derek, I'm cutting you off. I'm cutting oh, you off. On. You're cut off right now. Annie, you're on the clock. You guys going straight across the board. Give me a percent chance the pack 16 actually happens. Go, Derek. 85.9%. I'm going 87. 100%, no doubt. No doubt. 100%. It, 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 there's gonna, are they going to win a game this season? I think they will. They've I mean, got it's to. It's a long they, season. They've they got to win a game, to. right? I'm going to say yeah, 100%. We all know the lines. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here we go. Gym Cats begin their season on January 6th, hosting Cancun. Too bad you guys can't go there. <laughs> I'm so excited. Don't let your sister hear that. Why do these players think it's a good idea to punch each other? Like, I don't understand what, what they think they're going to get out of that. You know what? It's, it's guys. You know, if you sound <laughs> it, it's hey. Come on. Why fight right before the half? Why fight at all? I, I don't know. I, just, I don't know. I wasn't, I mean, I was, I was at the game, but I was not inside of that skirmish. I have no idea why. I don't know what, who said to who. I don't really care. There's no room for such childish sloppy behavior i'm sure guys get poked in the eye and you biting fingers biting and, fi yeah. all kinds of stuff I bet he does better than my favorite number two overall draft pick darko milicic 2004 yeah that's 2003 a, excuse me and again we don't want to talk about that <laughs> i don't want to talk about that i mean you can't send some big white guy down into inner city comp and expect to get uh, and a, re a recruit to sign with you that's just that's just the reality of and, what it is so and i gotta ask you this though what's more embarrassing having a streaker rush the field or having your students rush the field prematurely in the game two years ago against Oregon. All right, I'll take touche. the naked guy. Then Dejas missed another extra point, blocked. That's a good question because I've never been shot. I no, can't honestly I, say I, I I've been know. shot. And he delivers faster than the Papa John's delivery guy. Foles goes to Gino Crump. You call him Keola, I call him six points. At Kadeem the Dream Carry, showing the Sun Devils a little preview of the future. Over or under, Zach spends 26 seconds today in the final word talking about Detroit sports. Oh man, this one's easy for me. I'm gonna go under because he has nothing good to talk about. You know, I have half a mind to talk about Detroit because it would ruin Derek's over under, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm gonna talk about, <laughs> yes. talk about uh, you're safe. And now it's time for 
The Bear Down Spotlight, brought to you by UATV. I'm here with volleyball sensation Tori Moore. Now it's time to look at scores around the school. The soccer team losing to Stanford here at the UATV studio. We wish you all the best and a healthy recovery. Now it's time to look at scores around the school and what to look forward to next week too. Arizona at Oregon State for football. The soccer team, oh, we're going back to scores around the school. Arizona tied 2-2 against Colorado. And the volleyball team fell short in the California and Stanford games. It's time for the final word. Each one of these analysts will have 30 seconds to discuss the topic they're choosing. Uh, my boy Jason Barrera just lost $300 on sports betting this weekend, so if anyone needs to help him out, 1-800-GAMBLER. Amadeo De Laval. He's 6'4". He's a combo guard. That's going to be the name. Everybody's going to go on Google, learn how to pronounce it. You're going to keep hearing it over and over again. I can't even spell it. Oh, no, that awesome. How do you Google it without being able to spell it? <laughs> I'm going to hand it to the guy repping No Shave November harder than anybody right now. Zach, take it away. So I'll give you a moment just to take it in, take a look at that. All right, guys, it's Tebow time, baby. And he, he's on a roll. Derek, Derek, you got eight seconds. Show us the Tebow. Can you, do it? Can, you do, it? Can you do it? Show us. Show us. Can you do it? Show us. That's all I got. That was oh, bad. That was bad. All I got. That was I can't bad. do it. I'm not Jesus like Tebow is. <laughs> this is how you do the Tebow right here. There you go. That, oh, was, that, that was pretty. That was, that was, sorry. I'm done. It's, it's good. All right. So I am still an angry elf when it comes to the holidays. Four, I'm not even going to talk. Look at that. Six and oh, huge comeback against Northwestern. The NBA is back. Big deal. <laughs> 153 days of the NBA players and owners ignoring the fans. Now on day one, I'm supposed to come back and be fine and happy with the NBA returning? I don't think so. You know they could care less, right? That's what that's the worst part. <laughs> we uh, got the callback. The angry boom. elf goes off again. He's steaming over here. Don't even show. get me started. Bitter, bitter, bitter. Bitter. Not bitter. Disappointed. Could you imagine a Rex Ryan trying to chase down Andy Reid? That would have been my next thing that I'd like to see. I'm boycotting Black Friday. As a matter of fact, I'm not shopping until the day before Christmas. So there. Up yours, corporate America. What did you call yourself, an elf? Angry elf. Yeah, an angry, angry elf. Have you ever seen the movie Elf with Will Ferrell? Thank That's going to wrap up tonight's show of the Dorm Room Sports Chat. There's 168 hours in a week. Start counting down, and we'll see you when you hit zero. Time's running out. We're running out of time. However you want to look at it, the show's coming to an end. Unfortunately, time's running out for tonight, but don't worry. We'll have some tricks and treats for you next Sunday night for the DRSC Halloween special. For Zach, Derek, and Annie, I'm Mike Rabin. See you next week. 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 Annie, I want you to finish this off. What do you see in the future for the 49-year-old Stoops? He's leaving Arizona with a 41-50 and 50 record, a 1-2 and two record in bowl games. Are you going to answer your phone on TV? Or Annie. Focus. Silence. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any potential school he might end up at. Or do you think he's done coaching? And I hope that wasn't Stoops right now. Tell you what <laughs> well, yeah, say. actually, you got, uh, you got him on the hotline next time you pick that up. I was just up. told, yeah, Stoops yeah, just uh, sure. called and he sure. said, no, I'm not done coaching. A lot of funny moments this semester. Unfortunately, this is going to be my last show with the Dorm Room Sports Chat. I'm graduating this Friday from the university, and a new host will be announced on the first show of next semester. I want to thank my three analysts for a lot of fun this semester. And of course, my manager, producer, and in-studio crew for all of their hard work. But what would the DRSC be without the final word? This is the last time I give you guys your 30 seconds to talk about whatever it is you want to. Just keep it sports related. Gonna hand it off to Derek first. 30 seconds on the clock. Take it away. All right. Well, this is getting a little emotional, guys. But uh, I'd like to thank you all as well, as, and thank you to Mike as well. But I'm gonna actually go ahead now. Uh, this is the holiday season. Uh, I just want to keep this simple. Uh, with all this Jerry Sandusky stuff and Bernie Fine things going on, I, let's just remember what sports are really about. Let's keep it to the field. Let's keep the competition to the field. And let's stop worrying about all the money. I just, that's what my holiday wish is. For us just to come back and be as pure as they can. And let's just have fun and uh, compete. That's all I've got. Okay, well said, Derek. Annie, 30 seconds on the clock. 
All right, my problem is with officials. There's always a lot of controversial calls, but this weekend was just too much for me not to call them out. It's a championship game for Cathedral High School, and quarterback Matthew Owens is running for what would have been a go-ahead touchdown, raises his arm, puts it back down. They call him, flag him, touchdown does not count. Cathedral loses it 16 to 14. The rule states that it needs to be obscene or excessive gestures or language. And I don't believe that him raising his hand with a little bit of triumph was, and it was his 18th birthday, and I'm fitting that in there. Time's up. <laughs> and Talk for the final him. time, I'm going to hand 30 seconds to Zach. And I decided I'm going to buy you a razor for Christmas this year. Uh, you'll need a bigger razor. <laughs> but come on, NBA, are you serious? Are you serious? David Stern nixes the Chris Paul trade from New Orleans to Los Angeles, would have dealt Lamar Odom Pau Gasol. If his goal is to draw the ire of everybody in the room, he is certainly succeeding. My original boycott was 153 days, which was the length of the lockout. But now, my, my boycott will continue until David Stern takes his thumb out of all 30 of those pies. CBA, <laughs> CBA, what's that? What's that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I couldn't ask for a better 30 seconds to close this show. That's going to do it for this season of the Dorm Room Sports Chat. The show will be back next semester in January. Once again, I want to thank everyone down at the UATV studio for making this show happen this semester. And for the final time, for Zach, Derek, and Annie, I'm Mike Rabin. Goodbye, Wildcats.